My name is Roger de Somaris. Welcome to the webinar, The Principles of Responsible Investment. Uh, I'm the co-lead of Guernsey Sus uh, Sustainable Business Initiative, which is a Chamber of Commerce initiative. And um, uh, it's, this is our event that we're putting on. The SBI was set up to help Guernsey companies find out more about sustainability, including sustainable finance. We're also keen to talk to people or businesses who are able to share their expertise with others in the sustainability area. Uh, if you want to get involved in the Sustainable Business Initiative, um, uh, search Facebook, Twitter, or LinkedIn, or get involved through Chamber to find out more. Um, I'm going to be running the slides for Jennifer uh, uh, on this presentation. She's, I'm delighted to say, my co-lead on the Sustainable Business Initiative now. She joined a couple of weeks ago. Um, so I'm really delighted to have her on board, and she brings great expertise to the table. Um, a bit of housekeeping. Um, I'll try not to break the computer again, first point. Um, a big thanks to uh, Sustainable Institute Finance for running these set of fringe events to run al alongside their Sustainable Finance Week. And there's loads of great um, uh, events there. So if you haven't checked them out, check them out. It's probably going to be about a 30 minute talk um, with 10 minutes of Q&A afterwards. If you've got a question, please just put it in the group chat and I'll try and capture that later and, and ask it to Jennifer and she'll try and answer it. Um, and um, so, Without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Jennifer Strachan, Sustainability and Business Development Manager at IAM Advisory, um, and I will start the presentation. So, Thank you very much, Rollo. Hopefully we'll get it up in a minute. Um, just a quick point. I'm, um, I'm speaking to you. I, I have no representation um, of PRI, so I'm speaking to you simply as somebody uh, who's gone through the process as a signatory. So IAM Advisory has just recently become a signatory um, and it's been a really interesting process. Um, it was really because of that that I just wanted to share um, what we've learned and, and what the resources are that are great. Um, so I think for me also, um, I just joined SBI because I think for us to really say Guernsey Green Finance is, a, is the place to be. Guernsey companies need to be walking the walk um, talking the talk uh, isn't good enough these days um, and Guernsey made a great start with some, some great initiatives um, driven by the folks at Guernsey Finance at We Are Guernsey um, but I just think it's, it's more about sharing and uh, so we're looking forward to, to, uh, to sharing with you this. So if we go to the next slide, just start a little bit with the background. Um, really the principles for responsible investment is, is an ESG investors network it was set up actually in, in, um, in 2006, um, because back in 2005, a group of investors, experts, um, and also involved in the UN, set about to create um, a neutral and collaborative organization. I think that's very important, that it is very much about sharing information, sharing resources, and also sharing pressure groups. Um, but the, the, the key point to it is, it is designed by investors for investors. Um, I think now they've got over 3,000 signatories, so it's quite a significant um, group of people that now are involved. Um, so we've got the next slide. The aim of the PRI um, is very much to uh, act in its capacity as a non-profit independent and it's acting in the long-term interest of its signatories. Um, so the financial markets, the economies, and hopefully their aim is that it makes an impact ultimately on the environment and society as a whole. It provides a very strong framework for integrating ESG factors into investment analysis and ownership practices that are aligned with investors' fiduciary duties. There are six principles that are set out by the PRI, so they are the principles, um, and the PRI signatories contribute uh, by developing a more sustainable global financial system. So it, it is the principles, but it's mostly, it's the collective, it's about the signatories getting together and making the impact together. So if we go to the next slide, this is probably a graph or a picture you're all familiar with. The UN SDGs were actually um, only agreed in 2015. Um, and I think they, you know, the UN has done a tremendous amount of work pulling together various strands, bringing people with them. Um, and they give specific um, sustainable development goals. So the idea being that there's, uh, they now serve to give specificity to the more broad-based principles that are the PRI. So they work in tandem. Um, so if I introduce now, go to the next slide, I can show you the actual six principles. Um, so as I said, it's a principle-based system. It's not rules, you shall do that, you shall do that. It's about incorporating um, a process of thought into the company. 
Um, so any signatory, they're going to look at ESG issues in their investment analysis and their decision making process. Um, particularly encouraging active owners, so those, those PRI signatories who are owners or asset managers, in, uh, incorporating the ESG issues into ownership policies and practices. Um, and also a big tenet is, you've probably heard a lot of talk um, this week about disclosure of ESG issues. What are the, um, what are the taxonomies coming? So EU has got its own green taxonomy. Um, the UK is looking at issues. We want um, to understand a little bit more about what's actually beneath the surface of companies. And the, the piece on disclosure is very, very important in terms of um, making sure that greenwashing isn't happening. So making sure people aren't setting themselves out to be more green than they are um, because they're actually disclosing um, information. Promoting acceptance and implementation of the principles within the investment industry, uh, working together, so the collaborative piece. Um, and then the biggest piece of all is the reporting on our activities and progress toward implementing the principles. Um, the, the reporting is actually where the work is laid out and it's the documentation of the work that happens um, uh, within each company. So if we go to the next slide. So what does being a signatory mean? So there's three categories of signatory. You can either be an asset owner, an asset manager, or a service provider. So for instance, I am advisory. Um, as an investment advisory company, we are a service provider. We don't own assets ourselves, and we have a slightly different um, uh, box, as it were, to fill out uh, and report that we will deliver at, uh, after a, sort of an annual report that comes out. So our report will be different than asset owners and asset managers. Um, it also means making a commitment to uphold and report evidence of the responsible investment approach. So it's that reporting piece. It's not just saying, but you're actually doing it. Um, and I think being a signatory also is a kite mark. It's signaling to the market that you have a set of standards, you have a set of principles that you're working toward um, to uh, make the world a more sustainable place. Um, and you will see most large uh, financial services firms uh, often will have the logo on their, you know, on their website and on their material. Um, so it, it, it is a great thing to signify to the market that you've met those standards. So if we go to the next slide. So who should be a signatory of the PRI? According to Guernsey Finance, 75% of assets under management in Guernsey is managed, administered or sponsored by PRI, PRI signatories. Um, locally, we've got 12 signatories. Um, they're mostly investment managers and, and a couple of um, uh, asset owners and then ourselves. Um, but obviously, we've got uh, branches of, um, of lots of uh, the international companies that will at the parent level be signatories. Um, so obviously their 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 Guernsey um, branch always gets caught uh, gets uh, is part of that um, group. So asset owners, asset managers, and service providers can join, which I mentioned before. So in Guernsey, what does that mean? So it means funds, individual um, fund managers, trust companies um, could potentially, in their capacity as asset owners, join um, asset managers, um, and also family family offices as asset owners could join the PRI. And we're seeing some of the large um, family offices join. Um, we don't have any, I think, uh, yet in Guernsey, but that would be a great thing for, uh, for local family offices to consider if they're interested in, in this area. Um, and if you're an investor, you should be asking, uh, and you're interested in this space, um, you should be asking fund managers whether they're signatories or not, because that will um, uh, be a key signatory as to you know, their seriousness on these issues. So if we move to the next slide, I'd like to tell you a little bit about um, the IAM journey to become a signatory. Um, for us, um, we have uh, been involved in the area um, individually with our clients, but for us, this enables us to enhance and discipline our approach to sustainable investment. Uh, we are actively trying now to encourage fund managers that we work with to incorporate ESG principles into the portfolios that we advise on. We encourage our clients to consider ESG principles and to incorporate those into their portfolios if that's what they're interested in doing. Um, and we also uh, advise others on becoming a PRI signatory. Um, so part of what I'm doing today is very much what we see as important uh, as a signatory to the principles, shouting about it, letting people know about it. Um, the more knowledge we have about the resources that are out there, because there are others obviously other than the PRI, um, the more we all collectively can uh, engage better in this. The other piece, sorry, one more back. The other piece is um, just engaging with PRI resources. Um, 
I've got uh, on the final slide, you'll see the website for the PRI. They have a tremendous um, uh, resource base um, for both learning. They have specific um, courses that you can take that they've, um, uh, one they've worked on the CFA with, one uh, they've got a, a sort of knowledge base themselves. And the other thing is that there are a tremendous amount of collaborative activities. So gathering fellow signatories um, together to either um, better understand, to report on, and also to start lobbying, whether it's um, engaging with uh, specific uh, issues within corporations, whether it's engaging with governments. And there's a continual dialogue between um, the PRI at, uh, at the corporate level and engaging its, its signatories' views on things like uh, engaging with the EU green taxonomy, for, for example. So we'll go to the next slide. So what are the advantages of becoming a signatory? Um, being ESG engaged is increasingly important and is valued by the market. There's, uh, uh, we just listened to a webinar this morning, um, that this huge shift in wealth between the baby boomers and the millennials that are coming up will only increase that value. Becoming a signatory is arguably one of the best known and respected networks. Uh, it's a framework that's, uh, that's very well, well respected and it signifies that commitment. Um, the PRI, as I mentioned before, has a wealth of resources to support signatories to encourage more sustainable investment. Um, I didn't mention before, it's also a hub for academics. So when the PRI was set up in the first place, it wasn't just investors. Um, it took a lot of in input from um, academics, um, as well as um, uh, uh, company-based, uh, sort of country-based um, entities. So it is very much about um, uh, engaging with the research and, and, and allowing that sort of process to go back and forth. And also there's a whole piece on investor company engagements, uh, which has been really interesting to, to start to look at. Um, signatories can join PRI lobbying efforts to further policy. Um, and I think for us, I am uh, advisory as a smaller firm, we would never have um, uh, the ability to impact anything on our own in terms of what the EU taxonomy might look like. But for us, it's great to be involved in a larger effort that allows us to, uh, to, to, to give a voice. So if we go to the next slide. Go to the next slide. Thanks. Um, so that's sort of the, the, um, the end of the, the, the sort of piece. Before I go to questions, um, I just would um, encourage any Guernsey-based firm who's interested in learning more about sustainable business practices, um, including sustainable investing, um, or who wants to, or who's able to share expertise, to join us with the Sustainable Business, business Initiative. The details are there on the final screen. I think, Rolla, we lost the screen share. Um, see if we can get the screen back. Um, but basically, SBI can be, uh, we can be contacted either on um, uh, Facebook, we've, there's an email address that'll go up on there, or via Chamber, um, because we're, we're part of the Chamber, Guernsey Chamber of Commerce. Um, I put my email up there. And then also you've got the um, website for the PRI is uh, www.unpri.org. Let's see if we can find out what happened to Rollo. Yeah, I'm back. Hang on. Can we sc share the screen there? Yeah, is, is it not sharing? Sorry. No, it's not. That's all right. right. Okay, there we are. There we are. Thank you. Um, so yes, yeah, so there, there's all the contact information. Um, and I think now, yeah, if we have any questions coming through, um, we'd be happy to answer that, to canter through that quickly. Okay, um, I've, got, I've, got a, um, I've got a few questions. Um, um, I've got a few questions that I'll, I'll read out. And, and I've got another one that's come in on, a, on another angle. So I need okay. to probably close the screen to get to that one. But um, that's right. So you've mentioned the advantages of joining the PRI. What did you find are the challenges to joining? So um, I think it's the same with a lot of initiatives. They sound great in principle, but it really is time. It's lack of time. And I think that it's trying to get members of a company. So in this case, I am advisory, trying to get everybody focused together, trying to understand what the ramifications are for the business, um, particularly because everybody's working flat out. Um, and I think a lot of financial firms will find in the last sort of several months, 
um, the work's just increased, it hasn't decreased. So I think it is about, it is about management signifying that this is something really important and worth um, spending the time on. Um, and I think also there's a question about, you know, is this going to bring in extra income? Um, you know, is this not just uh, another, um, another uh, thing we have to uh, deal with it? But I think my view is ultimately there will be income associated with it because uh, this is where the world is going. People want to know about this, but they want to understand it in a structured, uh, methodical way. And um, for us, joining the PRI, becoming signatory of the PRI, has been a method to really understand better and know that we're doing it in a methodical way. Um, so that's the, that's the challenge. It's really finding the time to do it and, and, and devoting the resources. But for us, it's been very important to do so. Yeah, I mean, I think what's clear from your presentation is um, the direction of travel is is more of this um, this type of thing, um, especially with that generational shift. So there's another question here. Um, how much time does it take to become a signatory? Is it a long process? Um, so in interestingly, the time to become a signatory is very quick. You simply sign up. Um, but the hard part is that they know that you're on a journey. They're not expecting people to sign up having all their, um, their um, sort of investment policies in place, having all of their um, staff training in place, having all the parts that are important to report on. So they help, and, and that's very much their, uh, so the membership team are there to help you on that journey. So the signing up is easy. Now we're doing the work. Now we are um, preparing ourselves to report in 18 months time. Um, and that's really been, uh, that's where the time consuming part is. Okay, that's, that's great. And um, uh, there's another question here that says, is the PRI supportive of divestment? The PRI focuses on active ownership and engagement. So their view is that the engagement is, is to be high quality rather than quantity. So their goal is very much to foster a community to share that by working together and having a greater impact that said, a lot of the signatories of the PRI will be um, on the divestment side. Um, but I suppose my personal thought on divestment versus engagement is if you're going to divest, so if you have um, clients or as an asset owner, you determine not to hold, say, oil shares, um, be very clear about what you're going to then invest in. Um, you know, what's the impact of that money um, rather than just saying we're just going to divest. Um, I think it's much more powerful to say, no, we're making a conscious choice to move from that firm um, because they're contributing to carbon or whatever the reason is somebody wants to divest because we're going to now invest in these other areas because we think there's a financial return. But we also um, like the policies that, um, you know, that, that, that they're going forward with. Right. Well, also on that theme, I've got another question that's come up. Um, which I think speaks a little bit to the, the tension that's um, involved in anything that's sustainably focused um, versus um, the more business as usual. So um, the question is this, how can PRI signature sure that they hold up the highest standards and peer pressure for this? For example, several signatories in investments to meat industry in Brazil, cutting down the Amazon, doesn't that make the principles weaker? So exploring some of that tension there. I think that that is exactly where the collaborative discussion part comes from. Um, I think that's all also why sustainable investment is, is so difficult um, because it's all these, um, one piece is a positive, but then it has a, a ramification that then has a negative ramification. Um, it's about going through the chain. And so I think one of the things that the PRI is very important to press is driving meaningful data so how do investors know that the ramification of the fund, the, the company they're going to invest in, what negative externality or what positive externality is going to come out of that? So um, I think that anything where you have a principle, you've got a, um, you, you have to meet it in your certain way. And I think the, again, back to the, the comment that it's a journey. If, if PRI, PRI, PRI signatories are falling short on that journey, then there needs to be a system in place to actually start calling those things to account. Um, so the, the, the PRI itself is um, not a perfect, everybody's met this 100% platform. It is about the journey to get everybody as close to 100% as possible. Um, so I think, I think yeah, that, that, that is an issue. Um, there is no perfection there. Um, but I think the positiveness of the journey outweighs 
those issues and hopefully those issues then, then get discussed and people start understanding them better um, is it makes makes the whole journey more powerful and I suppose to add to that I, I think we're all seeing that the external pressures on on all this kind of stuff that are um, are, are building um, in general mm -hmm. and that should should help keep people honest yeah. um, and then I've got a final question um, on my list here um, so uh, oh, actually I've got I've got a um, I've got another one actually that's just come in. So two more questions. So um, sure. how does being a signatory of the PRI deal with greenwashing is the, is the next question I have. Um, so I think that's very much back to the point of, of the meaningful data. Um, it's interesting, I was um, listening to a fund manager presentation earlier this week um, and the, the fund manager actually sold the share. So it's a, an ESG um, fund that they've got and they actually sold the share, not because they didn't like what the company uh, was doing or, or, or reporting, but they sold them because the data that they promised was not forthcoming. And they felt that if they couldn't actually provide the data to back up what they said they were doing, then um, that was enough for them to question, um, uh, to question the direction of the firm. And so that ability to provide that data is going to be the solution to um, allowing investors really to understand where the greenwashing is or isn't. Now it's not the be all and end all, because by definition, what we mentioned earlier, you've got these, uh, you could do one good thing and then you might have a bad um, externality as a result of it. It's complicated. Um, you know, this investment space is complicated. It's why there are no clear, easy metrics for people to say, okay, that one's ESG compliant and that one's not. Um, you know, even things that seem like a slam dunk ESG investment, like electric cars, um, you know, do environmental damage with, with the, 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 the um, well, both the, just the creation of a new car as well as the battery, um, the battery and, and metals that go into it. So it's, um, it's, it's, it's a tool, um, but as of yet, uh, there still is a lot of greenwashing going on. And all we can do is keep on the case, keep asking for the data and, um, and, and work together more to call them out. Great. And then um, I think the final question I, I have now, um, is um, how much and what kind of practical support does the PRI give for signatories on that journey? And presumably the journey um, of becoming, becoming signatories. Becoming, yeah. Um, so I've been really impressed with their support so far. I've got, well, first of all, I have two individuals that I speak to and um, I've been harassing them a lot with, um, how does that work? Um, you know, who, who does that? And they're uh, very responsive. Um, so on an individual level, you have an account executive. Um, they also are constantly then giving us information about, uh, would you like to join this policy discussion? Would you like to know about this particular area? So back to one of my original comments was about time. Um, you know, it could be a full-time job just getting to grips with what the PRI has to offer. Um, and I think they have the staff to sort of send you around the system um, quite well. So I, I've been very impressed with their, their support so far. Um, and, and also they will, they, they will support you before you become a signatory as well. They have a lot of great content on their website um, that's free to view. They have um, you know, people that will engage with you before becoming a signatory so that you understand whether it's for you or not. Um, but I've been pretty impressed with them so far. Okay, excellent. So um, I think thank you all for your questions and your engagement. That's uh, really pleasing to see. Um, thank you to um, Jennifer for a really enlightening and uh, detailed exploration of, of of the principles, and um, um, I think that I think that's been really useful. And um, please, please find the Sustainable Business Initiative um, online um, through social media or, or various different places, um, or through Chamber. And what we'll do is we'll uh, we'll put a recording of this um, up on the up in those places. So if you wish to share with your colleagues or people who might be interested. Um, then it'll be available to do so. So um, a final thank you to Jennifer um, for that. And thank you. Uh, I hope you all enjoy uh, the Sustainable Finance Week. Yep, great. Thank you very much. Thanks, Rollo.